good morning everyone it is june late june like the 27th we are idling out under the wolf Tiber bridge now we've got something really exciting for me i've been wanting to do this for a while basically i've been tweaking with a jig design from the owner with the owner of yankum custom baits you know i've been throwing his jigs a lot recently and we've just tweaked with a jig so let's go pick it up go skip some docks and see how this jig holds up it's going to be if we, when we get it dialed in it's going to be one of the best skipping jigs on the market all right, so anybody that's been following me for the past couple videos, I have been out of town and I've been on a terrible sleep schedule, but I finally got up, got out here on the lake, met with the owner of Yankum Custom Tackles. Me and him are about to go out there and try this jig out, but I'm gonna show y'all this thing real quick. This thing is like the perfect finesse jig. I've been messing with this thing. Me and him been texting back and forth for it. Look at that hook gap. Y'all stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll tell you all about it, but first, let's go catch some fish on that thing. Freaking jig, dude. That's a stud, dude. There we go, baby. Don't you come off? He ain't coming off of that hook. <laughs> Not with that hook we've got in it. Uh -uh. Get over here, dude. Get over here, dude. Right, you said a five or six pounder off this dock. <laughs> dude, give me some. Come here. Yes, sir. First fish on my freaking jig. I designed that, dude. <laughs> Dude, that's solid fish there. Come here. Yes, yes sir. dude. Look at that. That's How many awesome. times has that happened, dude? You design a new jig, come out, it's your first bite on it. Big one. That's a six. That's awesome. Look at that thing, man. I knew it was good, dude, with that rod bow just double. <laughs> I'm going to put him in live and take a few pictures. Yeah. Oh, Lee. Damn, dude. That was a good one. Yep. <laughs> now that one's hooked in there past the meat. That one ain't coming off. What do you think of the head now? So it comes through cover good. Dude, it's your, it's your design. Look at that. That was right under the boat pretty much. And he I just know, took I off noticed with that it. the rod doubled up. And I was like, how big is this one? It's a good fish, dude. Awesome. Dear, let me tell you something. Tell me. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Little bitty one. Yeah, Hook them good, though. I'll feed him to the other one. Business. That was awesome. Oh, what? Man. I wasn't prepared for that. Hope y'all got to see him though. He ran out and ate it. We watched him like a swim jig bite. I pulled up over that thing and he fought to the crossbar. When it went over the crossbar, he came out under the crossbar and smashed it. Kind of trash again. Got a little limb. Yep. A small limb or a jig worth nightmare. I don't care what angle your weed guard is or anything. There you go. Come on. That is a surprise. What's that? Come off? Yeah, this jig. I ain't expecting it. Flipping in a tree. Look at that thing's hooked. Coming out the side of their mouth. Never coming off in a million years. Mm. All my Alabama buddies, y'all need to come here. I'll put y'all on one of these. Everybody wants to catch a small mouth. These things are awesome. There's 
good fish. There we go. Every single one of them is hooked in the same spot. I mean, through the meat coming out of their jaw right there. Every single one of them. Dude, it's your design. I just built them for you. How to get back up here? Catch a sun. I love fishing like this. Everybody watching my videos know that if I'm in four feet of water or less, I'm having me a ball. He's been caught a few times, probably by me. Look at that. Out there, dude. Golly, look at how that rod's loading. It's actually not bad. I snatched that sucker a mile, dude. That freaking seven foot six extra heavy pride and then 60 pound K9 eight strand is going. Doesn't have any give at all. Pretty little fish. Ate the little frog. Everybody's favorite way to catch them. All right, so I really appreciate everybody that reaches out and messages me, contacts me, walks up to me in every parking lot. I really appreciate y'all reaching out. I answer all the questions I can. I get tons of questions about the line, the rod, the reel, the techniques, all the applications I use for all kind of stuff. And I get the most questions without a doubt about jig fishing and everything about jigs. So basically, I'm gonna break down what my new jig has and I'm coming out with a signature series jig and I'm gonna show y'all that right now. I teased y'all a little bit earlier and now y'all have seen that it actually catches fish and it caught one big one. So I'm gonna show you what makes this jig better and I honestly believe that. If y'all have watched my videos, y'all know I don't talk about anything until I review it. I don't, I'm not just a salesman, I'm gonna actually show you what's better about this jig. So basically, my box of jigs, I've got them laying everywhere right now. I normally do, I've got tons of jigs in my boat and you've gotta realize these are the best jigs on the market I already have in my boat. So these have the best line ties and hook angles, period. I've looked at every single jig there is. And the problem with all the same old jigs is this. The line tie is actually an obstruction to its own hook point. So you can see how this line tie sticks straight up in a 90 degree angle. It just sticks straight up in front of this hook, hook point. What that's gonna cause is you to skin hook fish whenever you hook them deep or what you're going to have to count on is that jig coming out of that fish's mouth and then rotating and puncturing up. That's the only way you can get this kind of hook through the bone and through the meat. It literally has to come out of their mouth, turn, and then go into the roof of their mouth. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to rely on all that. So basically, if you take a jig like this and it's down the back of that fish's throat, which is where a fish is. A fish does not eat a bait with its lips. If you caught it on its lips, that means that something was wrong. Basically, if you hook them down in the back of the throat with this, that line tie is in the way. It's going to make you skin hook that fish. You're going to get them one layer deep. And everybody's had it happen. You, you throw your jig out. The first jump, you hook a fish. The first jump, he comes off. Basically, you never got that hook in past the barb through bone or through good meat. And same thing happens whenever you're trying to swing a fish in the boat. You get them out of the water, and it rips, and it comes out. Basically, you had that fish skin hooked. So this jig right here, you can see the hook point is probably at least a quarter of an inch higher than the line tie. Now, what that does, as soon as you move that jig, there's no obstruction, it digs. Like right now, it's digging directly in my hand. That is, there's no obstruction, it digs in in the back of their throat, you hook them deep, and you are not gonna lose as many fish. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that you're gonna land every single fish. There's no cure-all for that, you're gonna lose some fish. But your percentages are gonna go way up whenever you use this kind of jig right here. So I have a wide gap hook here somewhere if I can find it. Basically, this is what a jig looks like whenever it's an obstruction and I can use this so you can see better I can rub this literally on my hand up and down on a flat surface and not hook myself and the reason is because this is in the way of this so it, if I'm in a fish's mouth it's got to come all the way out I can rub it all the way up my hand then it's got to turn and puncture them in the top of the mouth I'm not dependent on that so we have teamed up and came out with this jig finally I've got one that is small enough that I can skip it in the post spawn and it's got a hook that will last. Basically, if you take that hook point and jack it up real higher than the line tie, it's more likely to flex because the, the pressure is gonna be put on that jig in a weird angle, it's gonna flex it out. So this actually has a hook that will last, it will not bend out, and it's got a skirt that is hand tied and paint that does not come off. The paint will come off if you beat it as much as I beat it for two or three days in a row, but I've been skipping with this jig all day, caught four or five fish on it, the paint still looks fine, the skirt looks good. The skirt is not gonna be a problem. It's hand tied, it's made out of you know premium silicone, and 
that's what we're gonna do for a skipping jig. It's gonna be 100% silicone. Pre-spawn, yeah, we like to have rubber. We like to bulk it up. We might even put a bigger hook in some of those jigs. But when you're skipping docks, you want straight silicone. You wanna thin that jig out. You wanna take the skirt, like this one right here, I would actually cut close to a quarter of an inch off of that skirt. And then I would take this speed crawl, which is the easiest jig trailer in the world to skip and it catches fish everywhere. And I'm gonna cut right out that first notch. I'm gonna cut it off, thread it on, and you know, this is gonna be the best skipping jig there is whenever it is completed just like this. Now, as far as trailers go, this is not gonna be a pre-spawn jig for me. This is gonna be strictly a dock skipping, clear water type of jig. And whenever in the pre-spawn, you want a big bulky jig, you know, you're not gonna use these types of trailers. But this is the other trailer that I'll use. Basically, if I'm gonna use this trailer, I'm gonna take this jig, thin it out some, cut that skirt down, and put this trailer on, it does not catch near as much water. You're fishing eight or nine feet deep, it's gonna allow you to fish faster. It's gonna allow you to get more of a reaction bite because it's gonna fall a lot faster. So I don't think a fish would bite either one of these too much different, but this one skips better and this one falls faster. So I use them basically depending on how deep the docks are or how fast or I want the, the jig to fall. So basically, this will be the jig that I have tied on my, laying on my deck 95% of the time. I will deviate rarely. But this is a 7 16 ounce. That's the one that I've been skipping with for actually probably about a month now. I've been skipping with a 7 16 ounce jig. And that's the, the normal size. I'm gonna keep on my deck at all times. The rod that I throw it on is a seven foot three, medium heavy, fast. I would recommend if you're gonna be in a little bit heavier cover, a little bit more um, gnarlier docks with a little bit more posts and stuff, go to a seven foot three heavy. This is the pride, you know, they only offer one line of rods, but they're built with the best components you can build one with. 20 pound canine, I will deviate that um, if I'm fishing super clear lakes like Smith Lake, a lot of floating docks, you know, if I'm not really around wood or stuff like that, if I, if I can set the hook on a fish and get them in open water, I will go down to 15 pound line. But if I'm just gonna have a jig rod laid on my deck to, to flip and skip and then pitch to bluffs, it's gonna have 20 pound line on it almost all the time. A 8.2 to one gear ratio reel. This is a Shimano Corrado 70. I use it all the time for almost everything. And then that right there is the ticket. So. That is my jig setup. Hopefully that answered a lot of people's questions. I've been getting a ton of questions about a jig for a while, and I'm telling you right now, this is the one to have. Y'all seen me catch those fish on it. I caught that big one on it. They actually eat it, and hope y'all enjoy the video. Leave a like, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button. I will link these jigs in the description. Hope y'all check them out, and let me know if you catch some on it. See y'all.